Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. We are approaching what I think of as book award season, where we are going to be getting the winner of the Women's Prize soon. The Booker Prize long list will be announced later this month. The Nobel Prize is not that far away, and then we get to National Book Awards and things like that. So all that got the wheels in my head spinning, and I started thinking to myself, I wonder how many of the recent major award winners have I read? So I thought, why not do a video where I look at the list for the winners of the last 10 years and see how many of them I have read. Now, for the sake of time in this video, I am planning to only look at the three awards that I consider to be the major awards of the literary world, the Pulitzer Prizes, the Booker Prizes, and the Nobel Prizes for literature. I know the Nobel Prize does something very different in that it awards a body of literature and not a specific work, but to me, those are the three heavy hitters. And if there's time at the end of this video, I will try to do the Women's Prize and maybe the National Book Award and call it good with those. If I don't fit in the Women's Prize and the National Book Award, because I'm assuming I will be out of time <laughs> at that point, I might revisit in another video Maybe an individual video, one for the Women's Prize when the winner is announced, and one for the National Book Award when the long list is announced. I don't know, all of that depends on timing, and I'm wasting time by talking about that. So let's start with the Pulitzer Prizes, my beloved, and go back through the last decade of winners. And when I say decade, I'm going to include 2010, because to me, 2010 is a nice, even number to start on, and then we'll go from there. It just so happens that the Pulitzer Prize has a 2021 winner, and the other awards don't because they haven't been announced yet, but we're gonna go with it, it'll be fine. I did pull some books off of my shelf that I am pretty sure I remember will qualify for these so I can hold some things up, but I'm guessing I'm going to have the least success with the Nobel Prize winners. I will have the most success with the Pulitzer Prize winners. So let's start with the Pulitzer Prize winners because I think that's the area I will have read the most books. It's my beloved, I'm doing my Pulitzer Prize project. And because it is an American prize specifically, I feel like that is where I'm gonna shine. <laughs> so why don't we start off shining? So let's start with that 2021 winner, Louise Erdrich for The Night Watchman. If you follow along, you know I have read this book. I did my reaction video to it not that long ago, and I'll link it down below. And I feel like it's something of a career achievement award for Louise Erdrich, who is an author who is definitely worthy of a Pulitzer Prize, but I don't necessarily feel that The Night Watchman is the book I would award for her. I had a sort of mixed reaction to it. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. But I'm very happy that we now live in a world where Louis Erdrich has a Pulitzer Prize. So sort of mixed feelings about that one. But at the end of the day, I did read it, so I have that in my favor. And when we go back to 2020, we talk about The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. I did read that book, and I was very lucky that I included it at the last minute in my Pulitzer predictions for that year, because I really didn't think it had a shot at winning. Not many people win two Pulitzer Prizes for fiction, and this was Colson Whitehead's second Pulitzer Prize for fiction in a very short time span. So he managed to pull that off. I enjoyed The Nickel Boys. I know there are people out there who did not enjoy it very much. I did, and I don't have a quibble with it winning the Pulitzer Prize. It may not have been the book that I would have chosen for that year, but I don't have a problem with it winning at all. I'm actually kind of happy for it. I'm not as happy when we get back to 2019, which was when Richard Powers won the Pulitzer Prize for The Overstory, a book that I tried to read. I actually had it from the library, I think, when it won the Pulitzer Prize. And I got through the first section and a little bit into the second section before I bailed. I may try to revisit it at some point since I feel like I should try to finish it for my Pulitzer Prize project, but I just don't know. I really didn't enjoy it. I feel like the first part feels like short stories and they're all beautiful short stories, but in the second part when you start revisiting them and expanding on the story and it gets weirder, it really lost me. So I read it, but I didn't love it. 2018, we get to Less by Andrew Sean Greer, another book I just happened to have from the library when it won the Pulitzer Prize. Less was a huge surprise. I don't think a lot of people would have predicted that it would win a Pulitzer Prize. So I did read it. I was, in fact, reading it as the announcement was made. But I feel like that is a perfectly fine, perfectly good and enjoyable book 
that had no business winning a Pulitzer Prize for fiction. I know that sounds a little bit mean, but that's how I feel about it. And I'll talk a little bit more about it at some point when I do a Pulitzer Prize deep dive on that as part of my project. So I'll save a lot of my thoughts on it for that. By the way, I, it doesn't matter for our purposes here today, but I feel like I want to give a little bit of time to some of the more recent winners of the Pulitzer Prize before I cover them for my project. Because, like, The Night Watchmen. I did a reaction video to it, but I don't want to do a Pulitzer Prize deep dive, even though I read it within the last year and it's fresh in my mind, because I feel like I want a little bit of time to pass, not for historical context or anything like that, but I think it's only fair to let a little bit of time go before doing a full deep dive or analysis of it. Do with that information what you will. That takes us to 2017 when the Underground Railroad won. That was Colson Whitehead's first Pulitzer Prize for fiction. This one I do have a bit of a quibble with because I was really in the camp for Homegoing by Yajiasi, and I love that book. Underground Railroad just kind of steamrolled its way through book award season. It was everywhere. It was undeniable. And I thought it was a good book. I actually appreciate what it did a lot more since I first read it. I read Homegoing first, and so by the time I read Underground Railroad, I felt like I had gotten everything it put out there from Homegoing already. But I have grown to appreciate what the Underground Railroad did over time, and that is why I want to give these recent winners a little bit of time before I do any kind of Pulitzer Prize deep dive on them. The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen was the winner for 2016. I did read that book, and I did not love it. I think it, Nguyen is a great writer. There are aspects of that book that I liked, but on the whole, it just didn't do it for me. So I read it, but didn't love it. Now we get to a book I actually own. Isn't it interesting that I've read all of the recent Pulitzer Prize winners, but you have to go back to 2015 to have one that I actually own, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I did read this book, and I loved it, which is kind of surprising because it has a lot of things in it that usually irritate me. It's got very flowery prose. The plot of the book depends on some contrivances and things like that, but I just love this book, and... I am not so excited about his upcoming book, but I feel like I should go back and read some of his earlier work. I've heard that Shell Seekers, which is a story collection that Anthony Doerr wrote, is great. So I did read All the Light We Cannot See. So far, I have a perfect track record for the Pulitzer winners, but I know it's going to end by the end of the decade, and I have a pretty good idea where that will be. 2014 was The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I did not finish that book. I did not like that book. I think I may have skimmed the ending... Or maybe just because the movie has been out, people have talked about the ending. But I feel like I know what happens. So I can't really quite remember anymore if I fully bailed or if I just skimmed my way to the ending. But I was not a huge fan of that book. But I did read it. And 2013 is where we lose the plot. The Orphan Master's Son, Adam Johnson. I have wanted to read this book ever since it was published. But I have not gotten around to it. This was actually brought to my attention first by the Tournament of Books. It won that about a month before it actually won the Pulitzer Prize. So I already had it on my radar by the time the Pulitzer was announced, and I ran out and bought a copy once it did win the Pulitzer Prize, but I still haven't gotten around to reading it, and I feel like I need to. So we have to go back to 2013 before we find a Pulitzer Prize winner that I have not read yet. 2012 is the year that they did not have a winner, even though they had three finalists, and I have read two out of the three finalists. The finalists were Swamplandia by Karen Russell, Train Dreams by Dennis Johnson. Those are the two that I've read. I have not read The Pale King by David Foster Wallace. And that takes us to 2011, when Jennifer Egan won for A Visit from the Goon Squad, which I did read and enjoyed. I was really happy that she won, especially because that means that Jonathan Franzen did not win for Freedom. Yes, I am one of those petty hater type people when it comes to Jonathan Franzen and I have a signed copy of A Visit from the Goon Squad because I saw her speak at the 92nd Street Y when I still lived in New York City with Jeffrey Eugenides and she was fascinating. I would highly recommend going to see her speak if you ever get the opportunity. I really enjoyed her conversation and I enjoyed her book A Visit from the Goon Squad. I have not read any of her other books, and I own at least two of them, Look at Me and 
Manhattan Beach. Her upcoming book, which will be out next year, is a sort of cousin to A Visit from the Goon Squad, as she has described it. So that has me a little bit excited as well. And in 2010, you have Tinkers by Paul Harding, which I've always been interested in reading because it's sort of a complicated family book. I love that type of book, but I haven't gotten around to reading it. And that book was probably the biggest surprise of any Pulitzer Prize winner in the last 20 years. Mostly because nobody had heard of it when it won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. So since 2010, there have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 winners because they skipped a year. And I have read all but two. That's pretty good. I had a feeling the Pulitzer Prize was going to be my strong suit. In fact, I think I may have read every book that won a Pulitzer Prize in 2000 to 2009. Let's see how far back we have to go. Got that one, got that one, got that one. And now I failed. 2004, The Known World by Edward P. Jones. I, I missed that one as well. That is the only book from 2000 to 2009 that I did not read. And let's just for clarity's sake, since we're here and I'm doing this, how many of the ones from the 90s am I missing? I have not read American Pastoral, Martin Dressler, Independence Day, A Thousand Acres, Rabbit at Rest, or The Mumble Kings Play Songs of Love. So once you get to the 90s, I start losing the plot. I have not read six. That's where I lose it. But I think that makes sense because the year 2000 is when I graduated high school, got a job in a bookstore. So it makes sense that I've read a lot of the ones after that. So that's the Pulitzer Prize. I knew that was going to be a strong one. Let's move to one that's probably going to be less successful. And that's the Booker Prize. We'll end with the Nobel Prize for Literature, which I think is going to be a bloodbath, <laughs> being honest. All right. The 2020 winner of the Booker Prize was Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. I did read it. It was one of my favorite books of last year. Very happy that it ended up winning. This, I think, is a fantastic book. I know a lot of people think it's very sad, depressing, things like that. I really loved it. I, I think it's a fantastic book, and I am very happy that it won and that I read it. 2019 is that weird year where there were two winners, and I read one of them, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo, and I loved this book. I thought it was really great. I'm very happy that it won. I did not read The Testaments, which was the other winner, and I don't know that I will. I've heard good things about it. I've heard bad things about it. I've heard mixed things about it. For me, I just like The Handmaid's Tale as it is, with the ending that it has, and I don't really feel like I want to find out what happens next. So I'm probably going to leave it alone and not do the Testaments. And from what I've heard, I can't really say because I haven't read the Testaments, but a lot of people who have read both have said that Girl, Woman, Other is the one that really should have been the sole winner. And from having read Girl, Woman, Other, I agree with that. I think it is a great book. I love what it does. I am so glad that people have continued to pay attention to this book because the fear was when it won alongside the Testaments that everybody would pay attention to the Testaments and forget about Girl, Woman, Other. And the opposite feels like it's happened. At least in my circle of people, everybody talks about Girl, Woman, Other. People have kind of forgotten the Testaments. So that's the one that kind of became a footnote over time. Back in 2018, Anna Burns won the Booker Prize for Milkman. I have not read it. I feel a little bit resistant to the idea of reading it. Although I have gotten some comments that the audiobook would be a good way to approach that. Because the narrative is supposed to be a little bit difficult to follow. And I've heard that the audio makes it a little bit easier to immerse yourself in that world. So if I do ever read Milkman, that is probably the way that I'll go. If I do get to it, it's probably going to be a while because I think there are other things I would rather read first. I feel like I would rather get through my Pulitzer Prize project first before getting to Milkman, if that makes sense. So maybe someday, but not for a while. In 2017, George Saunders won for Lincoln and the Bardo. I did read that book and I did not have high expectations for it because I had previously gotten very hyped up for 10th of December, which was a story collection that he wrote. And I thought it was fine. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. So I did not expect a lot when I picked up Lincoln and the Bardo. I actually listened to it on audio and the audio production of that book is fantastic. They have a full cast of actors to perform the parts, including David Sedaris, 
Nick Offerman, Megan Mullally. I'm forgetting anybody else who's in it, but it, they all do a really good job bringing that story to life. And it ended up being very heartfelt and enjoyable to me. And I am glad that I read it. And it has me a little bit more curious to explore some more of George Saunders' work because I surprised myself by enjoying that one as much as I did. In 2016, Paul Beatty won for The Sellout, which is a book that I am shocked I have not gotten around to reading because when it came out in paperback, I was wildly excited about reading it and I haven't gotten around to it yet. So I really need to do that. I've heard great things about it. What's interesting is that, so this won the prize in 2016. Just in the last five years or so, I have heard people talk about this book not aging very well, but I've also heard people say that it still holds up. So it would be really interesting to read it for myself and see what I think. As a white man who really <laughs> should have no opinion about race in America or anything like that. However, I have not read it and I'm very excited to get to it, hopefully at some point soon. So if, for example, this is something I would prioritize way ahead of Milkman by Anna Burns. Maybe that's a little unfair, but here we are. In 2015, Marlon James won for A Brief History of Seven Killings, which is not a brief book in any way. I had actually purchased this book in the week leading up to it winning the Booker Prize. I was in Vermont visiting my family and went to Northshire, which used to be my favorite bookstore. It is still a bookstore that I really like. I just wouldn't say that it's my favorite anymore. And I purchased this while I was there. I had been planning to pick it up on the plane and as we boarded the plane, they were making the announcement for the Booker Prize winner, and it had won. So I actually started it right after it won the Booker Prize. Here's the thing. Actually, my bookmark is still in it, so I can tell you how far I got. Page 79. I was not feeling well when I got on the plane, and I realized after I landed that I couldn't remember anything that had happened. I think I had also taken some cold medicine, so reading the book just felt like a wild fever dream, and I thought to myself, I need to put this down until I feel better. So I put it down, and I haven't picked it back up, but I want to. So I've read 79 pages of this book, and I need to get the rest. I'll have to start over when I actually do. But um, actually, I'm just curious if that is a Northshire books. Yeah, it is a Northshire bookmark on page 79, letting me know that that is where I left off. And actually, there is some other piece of paper in here, and I wonder what that is. Oh my gosh, it is my plane ticket for Delta. <laughs> so that lets you know, yes, I was on a plane when I picked this up, and oh boy, <laughs> that turned out to be a mess. In 2014, Richard Flanagan won for The Narrow Road to the Deep North. That was a book I really wanted to read at the time, and never got a copy, never got from the library, and still have not read. So it is something that I would be interested in. I would read that before I would pick up Milkman as well. I feel like I'm being mean to Milkman <laughs> throughout this video, but here we are. In the years since the urgency to read it has died down, which is probably normal since it's been a while at this point, but I would like to read that book at some point. I am less excited about 2013's winner, Eleanor Catton's Luminaries. I have heard mostly negative things about that book, and since it is a brick of a book, I feel like I would be passing that one completely. So let's be nice to Milkman. I would read Milkman before I would read Luminaries like 10 times over, probably, based on some things that I've heard about Luminaries. If you are a fan of Luminaries and would like to change my mind, please leave me a comment down below and tell me why I should reconsider my opinion about it. And that takes us to 2012 when Hilary Mantel won for Bring Up the Bodies. I did read this book. I had already read Wolf Hall and I ultimately read The Mirror and the Light. So I've read the whole series, even though only two of them won Bookers. This is my favorite book of the trilogy. And I am very happy that it won. It is a fantastic book. I really like that it is much more focused and tight, has a very specific time period that it is covering, and it just does it extremely well. It's a great book, and I am happy that it won the Booker. And then 2011 was Julianne Barnes' The Sense of an Ending. I did not read that book. I did read a book by Julianne Barnes. I want to say it's like 
the lemon table? Is that a thing? <laughs> I am check clicking onto his page on Wikipedia. The lemon table, 2004. That is the one that I read. And I thought it was fine. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. I don't think I'm super excited to read The Sense of an Ending. I've heard very mixed things over the years. But... I'm not opposed to it either. This is also something that I would read Milkman before I would read Being Honest. Again, if you'd like to change my mind, put it in the comment section down below. 2010 was Howard Jacobson for The Finkler Question. This was a fun one because I was working at Macmillan when it won the Booker Prize in the distribution department. And one of our distribution clients had the North American rights to that book. So one of our books won the Booker Prize, and that was a great sense of fun. However, I don't know that I have ever really been excited about reading this book. I would probably prioritize Milkman, The Narrow Road to the Deep North, certainly, and some of the others before I would get to it. I think Luminaries is the one that I would be least likely to get to. So in this time period, there were 12 winners of the Booker Prize thanks to that tie, and of those, I have only read four. So I had a feeling this was going to be a weak area. I didn't think it would be that weak. Let me take a peek back at the previous decade and just see how many of those I read. Wolf Hall, The Sea, The Line of Beauty, Vernon Godlittle, and Life of Pi. So I have five from the previous decade. I did a little bit better there, but still, Booker Prize is definitely a bit of a weak area for me. So let's go to the Nobel Prize for Literature, which I'm guessing is going to be a bloodbath and we'll see how bad it actually is. The 2020 laureate is Louise Gluck, who is a poet. I would actually read a collection of her poetry. I'm trying to get more into poetry, in fact, and I've been sort of keeping an eye out for collections of her poetry at my local used bookstore, and they haven't turned up yet. But when they do, I would be interested in reading her work. The 2019 one was Peter Hanka and New. <laughs> I have not read him will not be reading him. I will link my reaction to the year when they announced him, both him and Olga Tokarczuk as the winners, if you would like to know more about why. But Olga Tokarczuk is somebody I would get around to reading. I have not right now. Her most popular book is uh, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Is that it? Let me check the title of that. Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. That is the one that I would classify as her most popular, at least in America. Book. I've heard mixed things about it. However, I would be interested in getting around to it at some point. The 2017 Laureate is someone I have actually read, Kazuo Ishiguro. I have read three of his books right now. The Remains of the Day, Never Let Me Go, and Clara and the Sun. And Clara and the Sun is the only one that I would classify as something of a dud. It's a good book. Yeah, I just really didn't like it all that much, but I love Never Let Me Go and The Remains of the Day. I'm really happy that he won a Nobel Prize for Literature because what he does in these books is so deft and difficult and different. I think he's a very unique writer. He is someone who teases out the details of his stories over time. And the way he does it in these two books is really beautiful, hinting at larger worlds and themes in just a spectacular way. I also have a copy of A Pale View of Hills, which I am really looking forward to getting to at some point. I believe this was his first novel, and, and he is an author I would definitely be willing to explore further. I would also read The Buried Giant, for example. 2016 is that wild year that Bob Dylan won a Nobel Prize for Literature, and I've heard his music. I love the audacity of defining literature in a different way by including a songwriter or musician, because songs are essentially poetry, but it always feels like an odd win to me. And I don't know that I'm 100% behind it, especially since Bob Dylan, of all people, really by all rights, didn't care. So I've heard his music, and because I've heard his music, I am going to count that as having read that author. 2015 was Svetlana Alexeyevich. I have not read her. She is the one who's mostly a journalist, I believe, and I would read her books because they sound fascinating. 2014 was Patrick Modiano from... I, I should mention the countries that these people are from, but country of origin is always a big part of the Nobel Prize for Literature. So Patrick Modiano is a French writer. I 
don't know that I would be very interested in reading one of his books. I've heard some good things, I've heard some bad things, but I'm not really all that excited to get to any of his work. Going back, Svetlana Alexeyevich is living in Belarus, was born in the Soviet Union. Bob Dylan is American. Kazuo Ishiguro was born in Japan but lives in the United Kingdom. Olga Tokarczyk is Polish. Peter Hanka is Austrian. And Louise Gluck is American. That takes us to 2013's laureate Alice Munro, who is Canadian. I have read one of her books, and either I need to reread that book or I need to try one of her other ones. I read Hate Ship, Love Ship, Friendship, Courtship, Marriage when it was originally published, which I think was somewhere around 2001 or 2002, and I did not like it at all. But in 2001, 2002, I was 20. So I feel like I would appreciate her work a lot more if I read it now, and I need to get back to her and revisit. So I have read her, but she is prime for a revisit for me, because I really think the last 20 years would have made a difference. God, has it been 20 years already? Almost. Hi. The 2012 winner is Mo Yan, who is Chinese. I have not read one of his books. I have heard good things. I feel like I've also heard some controversy about him. I do think I would read some of his work. I would want to know the larger picture around him before diving in. 2011's winner was Tomas Tranströmer from Sweden, and I honestly don't remember too much about his work at this point anymore, which probably lets you know that I am not all that interested in checking it out. Sorry. And the 2010 Nobel laureate was Mario Vargas Llosa, who I was actually reading the night I met my husband. We met in a coffee shop. I was there. I, I did some emails on my laptop and then pulled out my book and hung out long enough for him to come over and talk to me. But I, I was reading The Bad Girl, I think, by Mario Vargas Llosa at the time. I remember liking it. I don't know what happened to my copy of the book because I don't have it anymore. But I have read him. That is the only one I've read and I should probably try to do some more because I've heard good things about him as a writer. And I remember enjoying that one, but I, I remember meeting my husband more than I remember specifics about The Bad Girl. And I think that's probably fair. I'm gonna call it there. I'm not going to dive into the Women's Prize or the National Book Award. I think what I'll do is as we get closer to the announcement for the Women's Prize, I might look at them specifically and maybe like all of the winners and see how many of those I have read. I just realized I didn't count up the Nobel Prize winners that I have read. So there have been 10 winners of the Nobel Prize for Literature since 2010. And of those, I have read one, two, three which is not great. I need to do a lot better. And there are a handful in there that I would try, so I should probably think about that at some point. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it there for now, and then maybe as we get to the announcement of the long list for the National Book Award this year, I will look at some of the recent winners for that and do the same thing, if, if it's something that interests you. We'll see how this one goes and maybe go from there. But I would also love to hear how many of these books and authors you have read, please let me know in the comment section down below how many, if there are any that you would recommend, and if there are any you would recommend I or other people watching this would stay away from. Please, let's have a big old discussion in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. It is deeply appreciated, and I hope you understand that. And as always, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.